Unit testing is a fast and reliable way to check if small sections of our application, like methods or components, work as expected. As an example, let's consider a shopping app's basket component. The component needs to calculate the total of all the products in the basket and display it to the user. The most likely place where it can fail is in the method that calculates the total. So we can test if the method displays the correct output. Such a unit test might take the following steps. First, it'll pass two values to the function, like 1 and 1. Then, it will check if the result is 2. If it's not, the test will throw an error. Finally, it will end the test and display the results. Unit testing is so fast because we can immediately test a small unit of code after making changes. The way it's written also helps developers working in teams to quickly understand code that they didn't write. However, unit testing does have some disadvantages. Unit tests make it unappealing to refactor your code. Even smaller changes, like splitting a function, will require us to rewrite the test. We can only test if units of code work individually, we can't test if they work together with other units. To start running unit tests, we need a test runner. Some popular options are Jest and Mocha and Chai. Another option is vTest, which is a test runner for the Vite bundler. We'll use Jest for now, then cover vTest once we get to the Vite and script setup sections later on in this course. And, because they use a different project scaffolding method, we'll stick with the Vue CLI for now, just to get up and running quickly. The CLI allows us to add everything we need to start testing our application. So, we'll manually select features. Then, add unit testing. And select Jest as the testing solution. The other options aren't relevant to the lesson, so you can choose whichever you prefer. The CLI will install four things. The first is Jest, which, as we mentioned, is the framework used to perform unit testing. The second is the Unit Jest plugin that installs and configures the necessary modules for Jest to work in our project. The third is Vue Jest, which is a transformer that compiles our code to files that Jest will understand. And finally, it will install the Vue Test Utilities which is a set of utility functions that help us test Vue applications specifically. The CLI will create a few new files and folders for us. Let's quickly explore and explain them. Although we can store test files anywhere in the project, the convention in Vue is to store them in tests slash unit in the project's main directory. The CLI has also created an example test for us in example.spec.js. We'll write our own test from scratch in a little bit, so it's safe to delete the code in this file. The jest.config file tells Vue to use the Vue Jest tool as a transformer for our .view files. We don't need to change anything in this config at the moment. How we name our test files is also very important. Jest and other frameworks use specific file names to find their tests in a project. A file can be named whatever we want, as long as it includes either .spec or .test before the file extension. The convention in Vue is to use .spec and give the file the same name as the component it's testing. To write a test, we use the test method, which takes two arguments. The first is a string outline or description of the test being done. The second is a callback function that contains the test's assertions. As an example, let's write a simple test that checks if 1 plus 1 equals 2. We'll start with the outline and describe what we want the test to accomplish. In our case, we expect 1 plus 1 to equal 2, so that's what we'll write. The next step is to write the assertion. In other words, the actual test. To do that, we use the Jest Expect API, which uses matcher methods to compare values and objects. For example, if we want to test for exact equality, we would use the to be matcher. 
Although we cover many of the Jest matchers through this part of the course, a full list is available in the official Jest documentation. We'll add the link in the description below. We'll use the to be matcher in our assertion, because we know what the exact value of the result should be. When the project was generated, it created a new testing script in the package.json file. Executing the command in the terminal will tell Jest to look for any files in our project with .spec or .test and run them all. Jest will run the tests and output a message that shows if they failed or passed. The first line shows if the test failed or passed and the test file's location in our project. The second line shows our assertion description and how long it took to run. Everything below that is the test metadata. Because Jest is built on top of Jasmine, it has access to Jasmine's describe it syntax. That means we can use the it method instead of test to write our tests. They work the same, test is just Jest's implementation of the it method. We don't need to do anything special, just replace the word test with it, and everything will still work as expected. Describe it syntax allows us to group our tests by wrapping them with the describe method. Because all the tests are about the car, it makes sense to group them. Similarly, we can group a component's tests. To demonstrate, we'll describe an example group with the same test as earlier. We'll also add a second test, separating the two with a comma. The second test chains a not matcher to the expect method that works just like a regular conditional not operator. This time, when we run the test, we'll see the example group with both tests passing. We can also see the metadata shows two tests, but still only one test suite. When we group our tests with describe, they count as a single test suite. In view, the convention is to describe our test suite with the component name that we're testing. If we want to skip a test in a suite, we can prefix the method with an X. As an example, let's skip the second test in our test suite. If we run the test, we'll see the one that was executed and the one that was skipped. In test-driven development, we write a failing test before we try to write a passing one. We won't be going into test-driven development here. All we want from this approach right now is knowing that the testing works, which a failing test shows us. When a test fails, Jest will do its best to tell us what went wrong and where. As an example, let's change our assertion to be the wrong value. Of course, 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 3, so the test will fail if we run it. From the output, we get a lot of information. We know which file is the one that failed. Below it, we know which matcher method was used. Below that, we know which value the test expected and which value it received instead. And finally, we can see the line and column the failure is likely to come from. To fix the test, all we have to do is go to the line and ensure the received value or behavior is the same as the expected one. In our case, that's as simple as changing the 3 back into a 2, and the test will pass again. In some cases, a test can fail because the tool we're using isn't working correctly. A sanity test is a simple test that should always pass to check that the tools work. If the test doesn't pass, we'll know that the problem isn't with our code base. We already know our tools work because we've been testing throughout the lesson. But to demonstrate, let's change our example test to something that should always pass. We'll keep this test in our suite throughout the testing process. If it fails at any time, we'll know that something went wrong with the tools and not our code. In the next video, we'll learn how to test specific view features like components and props with Jest. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.